Yeah, I'm hearing is very clear. Bless God. Misbehaving. <laughs> Finally, we found God. Yeah. Thank How are you and your family? Yeah, we are fine. Bless God. Okay, so, God. okay the time is well spent, so we are going to go straight to business. Yeah. Please, yes. if you are watching us, wherever you are, just try and help us share the video. And uh, we promise you that you are going to be blessed tonight. Okay. One more, God, let's pray for two minutes. That uh, God will grant you your trance, and even as we hear God's word from your mouth today, that we will be blessed, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. We give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you as we hear your word tonight. And the word being spoken to our hearts. Grant us bless all the four voices in our heart, in our mind. We give all the honor that we have received. Thank you, Lord. Even as we hear your word, our eyes are open to know who Christ is and to know that Christ will see the true name of God as finally Christ in the name of Jesus. In the name of Father, let be your name. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we're going to go to the business. We okay. is here and some months now when we did the part one of God's true character or God's true nature. So I just want to leave. I may not be talking to you as a Christian. I may be talking to you as a journalist. So don't mind me if I ask some <laughs> question for okay. us. Yeah, so I leave it for you. So from your teachings, I get questions too. God bless Let's you. get it. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much for having me again, uh, Pastor Monday. Thank you very much. Uh, you. You're welcome to the teachings of tonight. Our topic for today is uh, the nature. We're going to look at the nature and the character of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this evening, we're going to base our topic really, uh, look at the nature first, but let's establish the nature of God. Last time we did a teaching on this, and today I was watching it, I, I saw a question that came up that he asked, and he said some Christians, why do some believers, a lot of people still struggle to uh, understand that God is, is uh, that God is Christ? Why do they not still believe what the Bible says about God? So I, I, rem I remember I said something that it's because they, 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 they are not established so today I want to just take us time to establish the nature of God as in Christ, that to explain that God is Christ, okay. that God is Christ in the flesh, so that when we, we, we start from there, we live from there, we can have a point of, you know, meeting ground for all of us to start. So for okay. all those that watch us, whether they're Christians, they be Christian, whether they do not be Christian, I, I believe we'll be blessed by today's teaching. So Amen. let's open our Bible to 1 John 5.20. That's where we want to start from this table. 1 John 5.20. They are read for us. It is, and we know that the Son of God is come mm -hmm. and has given us an understanding that mm -hmm. we may know him that is true. Mm -hmm. And we are in him that is true. Mm -hmm. Even in the Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Hallelujah. What is this thing? This is the uh, epistle of uh, Apostle John. He's telling us that yeah. uh, the Son of Man has come. That is the Son of Man, Jesus. He came mm. so that we will know, apart from uh, the very popular verse of scripture that we know, John 3.16, that yeah. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son to die for man's sin. Mm -hmm. Then John now he's saying again that uh, there is a secondary thing that is also very important, the knowledge, mm -hmm. the knowledge of the Son of God, that we will know that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. so he said, and we know, they have known that, he's talking about that generation, them, that he said, we know, with the emphasis of the way he put it, he said, we know, he's telling us that they knew, now they saw this man, they know him, they know that the Son of God is come. 
very convinced. It's, it's a very uh, uh, persuasive uh, language. This is not beating around the body, saying, We know that the Son of God is come and has given us Wonderful. understanding. He said that we may know him. If we look at this, there is two no here. This first no is first hand knowledge. First, first hand, like the no uh, in Genesis when he said uh, Adam knew his wife and he okay. became, became uh, pregnant. So yeah. first hand knowledge, he said we know that the Son of God, we have now the awareness that the Son of God, whom we are seeing now, is the Son of God. And he has come to do something. What has he come to do? To give us an understanding of the Father. Now, before the Son comes, before the Son came, let me hear, before the Son came, men knew God. They interacted with God, right? Mm -hmm. they, yeah. Moses wrote about God. All the prophets that came along, they studied Moses and they wrote about God. But mm -hmm. he's saying with emphasis here that God, the Son, came to give an understanding. Meaning this understanding that Christ brought was lacking amongst men. So if this understanding was not lacking, there was no use the, uh, reason for Christ to give this understanding. But this understanding was lacking, so he came to give this understanding that men will know him. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. This word true here means the reality. The reality, the, the, the very clarity of what we are saying. The, the tangible, the tangible, the tangibility of God. The God, the invisible God that is made. I see your hand. Yeah, sorry. You know, I said you are uh, sorry to call you. Now he, he, he come, can that we may know him. That we may know God or him, Jesus. I just want. So, okay, like the son came you know, that we may know God. The son came that we may know God. Yes, and we yeah. know that the son of God is come and has given yeah. us understanding that we may know him that is true. Now, him yeah. that is true is God made laid bare, God laid plain to man, is God made uh, naked. To man, the son came so that the father will be known of men. So the mm. son came so that the father God will be known of men. He said, and he came also to, to give us an understanding. Apart from knowing God, there is an understanding that lacks, that lacks in the generation before. If we look at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 1, it said, in sundry times and diverse manner, God, in time past, he has given the revelation in portals. He gave the revelation of himself in portions, in, in parts to the prophets. Now the Son has come in full knowledge. So, so John is saying here that the Son came and he gave the understanding. Which understanding? Understanding of the truth, of the true, and, and, and we are in him that is true. Now, this is uh, John's presentation of God of Christ coming. The reason, if we ask, if we might ask, why did Jesus, why did Jesus come? Why did he, mm. why did he come to the world? Mm. Number one, to save men. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He said the son has come, not to destroy men's life, but to give them eternal life. All those that believe will be saved. Now, if you look at the book of... Timothy, Paul was talking, he said, it is the will of God that men should be saved. And to come to the knowledge of salvation. After being saved, there is a knowledge and understanding that a man needs to know in order for mm -hmm. the man to have a full grasp of who God mm -hmm. is. Because there are many misconceptions of what God's nature is. And there mm -hmm. is also no controversy about it, but Paul told us that there is no controversy. If, mm -hmm. if I let's go there, first, first Timothy 3 16. Praise the Lord, hallelujah! First Timothy 3 16. If you are there, I can read for us, okay. First Timothy 2.16, 
it says, uh, and without controversy, great in the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justifying the spirit, seen of anger, preach unto the Gentiles, believe on in the world, receive up into glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Without control, but the great is the mystery of God living. That God has come in the flesh. What are we trying to establish here? That God came in the flesh to show men that he is God. Jesus is God. To explain the full nature, the, full, the God kind. To explain the God kind to man. In other words, you can say that God, Jesus is the explanation of God. If you want to know who God is, if you want to know what God can do, we look at the man Jesus. When we see the man Jesus, all we see in him is all that there is to God. There is no addition or no neither suppression from the man, Christ Jesus. When we sing him, we know that we have seen the God. God man. We have seen God in all his fullness. We have seen God in all his character, in all his God is laid bare to us. There is nothing else outside Christ to know of God. All the understanding, the knowledge about God is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. If there is any man that says he knows God without the knowledge of the Son, that man is a liar. It's just revealed that he does not know God. Because the Christ is the one that reveals the Father. Christ, mm -hmm. before Christ came, men has promises, they have prophecy, they wrote about God in mm -hmm. portions of truth. This still truth they wrote was it was truth, but it was in little little portions. But when Christ came, he, he brought us the truth, the whole package, the nothing left of God, and he also made corrections to any misconception that man had about God. Christ, the 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 the, the son, is the one that explained the Father to us. When we see Christ, we see how God is in its, in, his, in his nature, in his character, in all that there is to God is Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If any man is trying to know God without mm. uh, the knowledge of Christ, it leads mm. to idol worship. That's what it's called, mm. idol worship, because you want to, you want to know Christ without, mm. you, want, you want to know God without the knowledge of Christ. Mm. It is not possible. It leads to all manner of things. So Christ is the revelation of God. Mm. He said, we know. That's, uh, let's go back to that first John uh, 5.20. First John 5.20. He said, we know that the Son of God is come and has given us. He's not going to give us. He has given us. He's already in pattern. Mm -hmm. He has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. That is mm -hmm. him that is the reality. The reality, not, not counterfeit, not error now. The reality, the real truth about God. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Go John here is saying that Jesus is the true God. And eternal life. God is, Jesus is the true God, and Jesus is eternal life, is the eternal gift, eternal gift to man. Mm. Jesus is how we know God. Jesus mm. is what we study, who we study to know the, the image and the likeness and the character of God. Let's see what Matthew one twenty said about this. Matthew 1 20 it said um let's just read it so that we'll have the full completion. Matthew 20 121. Sorry. Okay. Hallelujah. Matthew 1 21 says, I read it, and he shall bring forth a son, 
and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from Jesus. We have said Jesus came to show God, according to John. Now Matthew is saying he came to take away the sin of man. To save the people from their sin, not to save them from God. To save them from their mm. sin. He didn't come to save them from, from God. He didn't come to save them from an angry God. The son, in fact, died and to save man. To show man the kind of heart. Let me put it like that. The kind of mind God had towards man. You know, in the Old Testament, yeah. it said, uh, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for you. So Jesus came to show yeah. what God has in stock for mankind. He said he has come to save man from their sin, not from an angry God, not from a dangerous God, because all of this is not found in God. The only reason the Son came is to save man and to show man the full nature, how God is. He came to show man, to demonstrate the love of God towards mankind. That's why he came. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is how we know God. We have said this before. What we see in Jesus, that is how God really is. Everything we see and study in Jesus is how God really is. Yeah. Jesus came to help us understand. Understand everything that God has in store. Everything that there is to God is what Jesus gave us. We cannot emphasize this enough. That Jesus, when you see Jesus, you see God. The, this Jesus is God that came in human form to show man who God is. Mm. Why? Because God is a spirit. Man could not lay their eyes on God. They could not know God by themselves. So what did God do? He became a man to teach man who God is. God became a man to teach man who God is. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is also the gift of God to man. God gave man a gift, a gift of understanding to know him and a gift of love. Mm. Jesus, God, God gave us Jesus as a gift so that okay. we will know him and we will have his love. We will experience his, his kind, his kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is important that we know the why the son came. The son came for two reasons. Mm -hmm. To save man from their own destruction and to show God, to show man who God really is. Mm -hmm. Religion will tell you God is mysterious. You cannot know God. In fact, that is a package that is used to deceive a lot. They are God yeah. is mysterious, so you can't know God. It's not possible. God is not mysterious. God is revealed in a man. Yeah. In a man, Jesus. God is revealed in the man, Jesus. He revealed all himself. All that, all that there is to know about him. He revealed it in the man, Jesus. Hallelujah. That place I say we know, that first John 5, 12, that's, we know, he said we have the same. And after, you know, when Paul was saying this, they have experienced Christ. They have experienced him. They have learned from him. In the incarnation, they experienced him. They, they sat under him. He taught them. Also in the resurrection, they experienced him again because he sat them down and teach them from all the yeah. things that was written in the scripture for them to understand, to come to that place of understanding that, oh, this is he that the, uh, the scriptures really wrote about. This is him that the prophet was saying, talking about. This is he that we all have known. We have, we have known him. We have experienced him for first one. This is him that explained the father. Mm -hmm. John was saying, knowing the father is knowing the, the son. The son mm -hmm. is the one that shows, that reveals the father to us. If we lack the understanding, the standing of the son we will not know God. So the son reveals mm. the father. Mm. Without Jesus, a man cannot have life. We know that. 
Also, without yes. Jesus, a man cannot, he cannot have the understanding of God. Without Christ, a man cannot have, just as it's important for a man to have the life of God, to be a one life of God, to be the son of God, such is also important for that man to know Christ, for him to be able to say, I know God. You must, that man must know who Jesus is, because Jesus is the embodiment of Christ in all its fullness. Jesus, the embodiment of God in all its fullness. Jesus is the one that explains, that gives all that we need to know, all that there is to God is what we see in Jesus. If Jesus does not do, do anything, like he said in John, um, he said, what I see my father does, uh, do, that is what I do also. That is to say, yeah. what he has seen his father uh, uh, does, that is what he, he do. He does not do anything that father that the father does not do what christ does or what christ did on earth what christ continues to do through us is what the father does through the believer he continues the work of the father whatever he shows them on earth that is the yastic with which we can say oh this is the word of god if we want to know what god is doing or if we want to say how god is uh, god character we look at the man jesus then we, from there, we can tell if something that has happened or something that is going on is from God or is of God or God is responsible. We just look at the man Jesus. He is the clear, the clearest, and the clear explanation of God. He brings us the clarity of who God is. Whatever there is that in any part of the scripture, even when we read our Bible, any that wherever there is any misconception we are trying to like you're misunderstanding we see what jesus has to say about that particular situation we see what jesus has you know committed what he has corrected so we start from there we know that that is the heart of the father towards man okay so and we've said that the way that god is that is the way christ is christ okay. explained Good. Yeah. So we were in our first uh first Timothy 316. Let's go back there and explain some something that we read that said uh, great is the uh mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was man in the flesh. Praise the Lord. That word manifest in the flesh. What does the it mean? Mystery. So, what does it mean that God ah, okay. that, Yes, that's what we want to explain now. You see, uh, the first Timothy, are we the first Timothy three system? I'm not there yet. Let me, let me, let me just. First Timothy. Okay. Okay. And without controversy. Now, what is Paul saying here? No controversy. That means all the apostles have agreed. They agreed. There is no controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the mystery here is not the great. It's not what is great. The mystery, what we, if we want to understand mystery in, in English language, we see something that look, cannot be understood. But actually, in the Bible, what mystery here is something that is yet to be explained. It's not something that we cannot understand. It's something that is yet to be explained. I might understand the thing. You might not understand it. You need further explanation to come to a place of understanding in it particular subject or area of things. So he's saying that God, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest, that God was on hiding. God was on hiding. Let me use that word. God was on hiding. God was manifest in the flesh. That is, God was laid bare. Before, mystery will, will intend something is hiding. Now, the greatness in it is that it is not hiding anymore. God is now revealed. You understand? God is now revealed in the flesh because he has come to 
uh, in Romans, Paul said um, that the, the things that the eyes cannot see is made, made manifest by the things that the eye can see now. Before Christ came, it was the things that the eyes cannot see. Now, when Christ came, God is now manifest. The main day, that's why John said, we have, we know, we know that the Son has come. Now, the Son has come to reveal the Father. It's no longer a mystery. God is no longer a mystery to man. Because why? Jesus has come to show us God, to explain God to us. Though it can still be a mystery to the unbeliever, it can be a mystery to the man who has not you know, sat down to be taught of this thing. But it's not a mystery to us. It's not a mystery to the Christian. Because why? God has... Let's say it was a hiding uh, uh, personality. Now he's not hiding anymore. God is not on hiding. You understand? God, great is the mystery of God in that God was man. God is not revealed, justified, you know, his, re his resurrection. Justified in the spirit, that's the resurrection. Seen of angels. Seen of angels. Preach unto the Gentiles. Believe. Mm -hmm. Seen of angels here. Uh, you, one would think that, you know, angel, those spirit beings, but actually, yeah, if we say thing of angel and preach, it, it means that somebody has spoken, somebody has given a message. The, message, the angels here who, are men that preach the gospel. They preach the gospel unto the Gentiles. And when they believed on the word, they received him up to glory. That's they received Christ into their heart. In other words, what is... Sorry, okay. you said... The angels he preached to our watch. In this place, in this very place, angels here are men that preached the gospel. You see, it's a scene of angels preached unto the Gentiles. These are men. You know, uh, uh, we don't give fixed meaning to words in Bible study. We use the very uh, concept, the very context of the Bible to explain the words. So angels in this very context are men. Men. Okay, let's let's take it slowly. And six, um, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ, justified in spirit, He has resurrected. Praise the Lord. He has resurrected. I was thinking he's, he was talking about his, uh, like his birth, like manifested the flesh when Mary gave birth to him. Yeah, that was that incarnation. That was incarnation. Manifest is incarnation. The, in this verse, you have complete. You have the whole Bible in this verse. John, First Timothy uh, three sixteen is is a complete summary of um, incarnation. Death, burial, resurrection, and the uh, heralding the gospel, preaching of the gospel. That's what you have in this. Let's take it slowly. I know that. And without control. Sorry, that manifests in the flesh. Is it about his physical birth or his uh, resurrection from the dead? No, that's that incarnation. It's physical birth. That's physical birth. Okay, it's physical birth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this physical uh -huh. birth manifests. In the flesh, uh, God, God manifests in the flesh, physical bent, justified okay. in the spirit. Uh -huh. See the next thing, yeah. justified in the spirit. That's resurrection. Justified in the spirit is resurrection. Yes. Okay. Scene of angels. Hmm? Who are the who are the angels? angels. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go gently. These angels, okay, let's let's use other scriptures to establish this. When okay. Christ uh, resurrected, uh, apart from when he resurrected, when he when he's manifested in the flesh, men saw him. Yeah. Right? Men were there. They, they were seen these men, this very particular thing, these men that saw him were from when uh let's say, okay, not let's say from uh, John the Baptist uh presentation of him to his death and resurrection. The men that saw him, uh, the, and the, after resurrection, the men that he taught, these are the angels that preach the gospel. The people that preach the gospel to the Gentiles, they were not spiritual beings. 
Look at it. This angel is talking about in the very next sentence, say, preach the gospel to the Gentiles. These angels that preach the gospel to the Gentiles, amen. But, excuse yeah. me, but when he resurrected from the dead, she, she be uh, when uh, Mary went to the graveside, she be so angel there. Yeah. I was thinking it was that angel that he was talking about. You understand what I'm saying? Get what I'm trying to say. When when Jesus resurrected and Mary went to the tomb, yeah. When the uh, that, that angel he saw, he, okay, he saw angel on the way. He, saw, he also saw Jesus. He saw Jesus yeah. on the way, and Jesus said to him, "Go and tell your brethren." You know, after that, after that very episode, Jesus stayed forty days to teach them. Yeah. Okay, in Luke twenty-four, he taught he taught them. Those people he taught, they were not the one that preached. If you look at that John. Uh, first Timothy 3 16, here we are now. You look at it after that scene of angels preached unto Gentiles. It is angels that preach here. Angels that preach here, they are not spiritual beings, they were men. Okay. Okay, scene of angels. So, okay. They, they were men. Don't worry, we will, see, we will establish this further. We will establish this okay. further. So, okay, to you give have, a. I type your question. Believe they Sorry. preached they preached unto okay let's see second peter 1 16. let's let's go to second peter 1 16. so okay. to further explain what we are discussing yeah second peter 1 16. okay Second Peter 1, are we? Uh, second Peter 1, 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fable when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are mm -hmm. witness of his majesty. Mm -hmm. High witness, high witness of the majesty. Do you understand now? Yeah. They were seen, he was seen of angels, angels that later preached to the Gentiles. Who were the people that preached to the Gentiles? Peter, James, all his apostles. They were yeah. the ones that preached to the Gentiles. So these yeah. angels in the Bible, angels in the Bible does not always mean spiritual beings. It means angel can mean the messenger. A messenger in the Bible is called angel. You understand? So that's yeah. why we take the meaning of every word of scripture. We take it from its very own context. We don't mm -hmm. give general meaning, like, like for example, we saw angel, maybe angel Michael. So anywhere we see angel in the Bible, we think is one of those angel Gabriel. No, we allow the, um, we allow it's one of the rule of Bible, Bible. So we allow the context of where which we are reading to give us the explanation of what is being discussed. So angels, angels here, and Peter is testifying here that they saw it, that they didn't make up the story. When they were when they were teaching that Jesus is the son of God, it was not a makeup. That they are, they actually saw him. They actually saw him and they have they have seen that they preached it. They preached him. They saw him, they 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 they, they, they were with him, they fellowship with him and they preach yeah. They preached him to the Gentiles. So if we go back to that uh, first Timothy uh, uh, 3 16 that we were, we will see that the angels that they preached, they preached to the Gentiles. The angels they preached to the Gentiles. Okay. 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 I want. I, I, are you seeing that second Peter? Yeah, I'm in the Peter. I'm seeing Peter. Okay. okay. Let's just read 17 to it. Let us read it. It's still, we have read it. Okay. 17. Okay. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. Mm -hmm. When they came, such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we have these two testimony in maybe more than two, two testimony of this in the Bible, where in the mountain of uh, Gethsemane, where Jesus was praying, and you know, the, the, this uh, disciples that he went, the three disciples, Peter and the two brothers, 
they had a, a trance and they saw uh, Moses, Elijah, and they, they, Peter said, let us build three tabernacles. And a voice yeah. came and said, no, this is the beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So this is Peter explaining now that they, are, they witnessed him, they witnessed and they heard the Father glorify him, that the Father glorified him, and that he is the, that is to say, Peter is explaining the authenticity, that is to say, to convince the people that Jesus is the God. Jesus is God, that Jesus is the Son of God that is sent to explain and to to give us the 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 full uh, knowledge and understanding of God. So he, he is telling them that we didn't make our story up. We we for we have not followed economy device. We, we didn't make the story up. Jesus is the Son of God. We had we even had the 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 voice of God saying, "This is my beloved Son." In him, I am well Hear this one. So that was Peter uh, discussing a uh, teaching that Jesus is God. It is very uh, important to establish to uh, any man or believers that Jesus is God. That is where most of the problem begins. Because if a man is not well established that Jesus is God, does not understand that knowledge that Jesus is God, or does not believe or commit totally to it, everything you read in the Bible, we become a true coin. Mm. The, the man can say God is good when he's having a good time, and when he's having a bad time, we say God is, is bad, God is trying to punish him. Because why? The man has not has not been established that Jesus is God. And in God, in Christ Jesus, we did not see any such thing. All that came to him, he gave them abundantly. All that came, came to him, he healed them, he gave them to it. He gave everything. He didn't deny anybody anything. So that is the very nature of God, the very nature and the very character of God, how God relates with man. That God just said when they saw him in John, John 1, he said when we saw him, we saw his fullness, that he is full of grace that he is full of grace. We have read that, used that John 1 before, that the flesh, the word was made flesh. And it came, that was another John's rendition to say that G this word that was spoken by Moses in Genesis actually is now, is now the one that became flesh. This is now, and he dwells among them, not among us today, but among them, that God, yeah, Jesus is God that came to dwell amongst them. So why was it important for the disciples to establish that, to emphasize on that? Even Paul went ahead to emphasize it, the nature of God, to, to tell them that, look, for we to know God, we must know this man, Jesus, because he is the, he is the one that represents God well. He is the one that explains God. If you observe him, you are learning God. If you want to know God, you sit down and learn Jesus. You observe you. You, you, you learn Jesus and you understand Jesus, you have understand God. So it was important for man, it is still important for man to know that it is the beginning, that's the beginning of our Christian journey, to know that Jesus is God. Yeah. Apart from what he came to do for us as humanity, to save us from our destruction, to save us from sin, it is very much more important for us to know that Jesus is actually the real, uh, uh, the true, like he said in First John uh, five twenty, he said he is the true, the true God. That's the reality of God. Because why? Man cannot see God. God is a spirit. So God has to look for a way to come to relate with man and to explain Himself, to clarify to Himself to man, to to make Him plain to man. Mm -hmm. Let's see how Paul put it in Romans one. In Romans one, how Paul used. His own language in Romans 1, 1 to 4. We are dealing with the nature of God as seen in the man Jesus. We are no. establishing that Jesus is God. Romans 1. Okay. If we know that Jesus is God, then we will not have the 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 double mind to relate with God, to see God and post God in every situation and circumstances that befall us. We will have singleness of heart towards towards God. We will approach God. 
Jesus said they worship me in vain. Why? Because they teach for doctrine, traditions of men. Traditions of men are, are teachings that does not portray Christ as God. Teachings that deny the deity, that deny the... If a man does not have clear understanding of God, of Christ, he will worship God in vain because he's going to come to God with traditions of men in his knowledge. He will come to God with baggage of, 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 of uh, a hearsay, God do this, he does that, he, he is a God that is, uh, uh, you can't know him, he's mysterious, uh, if, he's, if he's angry, he does terrible things, if he's, if he's happy, he does good things. That is because a man lacked the understanding of God as seen in Christ. If a man is established in the knowledge of Jesus and he knows that what Jesus do is what God do, he will not cross the boundary of seeing God. He will see God in a single heart, singleness of heart. He will not have double mind towards God. He will, he will come to God and receive from God what the blessings are. What are the blessings? The blessing is that ability to see God as he is in Christ. That is the greatest blessing a believer can have. When you are able to see God as he is in Christ, it is the clearest explanation and is a blessing. That's a blessing. That's our inheritance. Because you will be able to, every situation and circumstances, you'll be able to balance it. You'll be able to know that this is what God does and this is what God does not do. And when situations are coming your way, a lot of us uh, Christians, we have allowed Satan the room. It's also very dangerous when a man does not know God in Christ. You allow Satan the room to mess you up. There are situations you will stand up to and take authority over. But if you don't know that God is not responsible for society, things like a lot of people will say, God is uh, tempting me. He's trying to handle me here. He's trying to deal with me because of this. Not knowing that God is not responsible for that. If you know God is not responsible for that, you stand up and, and you, you know, you put your, uh, your authority to use and you place the situation where they are supposed to belong. And you are, your mind is always at rest. But if you don't know, Satan will use that as an occasion to trouble you the more. Why? Because you lack, man lack that understanding of what God, God uh, does or on, on, does not do. Romans 1 from 1 to 4, that's where we are reading. Paul, we are still establishing by Jesus. God. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. You see, if we take a look at this scripture now, it, it, it's almost like Hebrews 1, Hebrews 1, 1 to 1 to 2, that for God in turned three times and he died as manners. He has spoken to the prophets. You know, this is what Paul is saying here. He promised a fall. God promised a fall time that he is going to send a son. The meaning of a fall. That is beforehand. Beforehand. You... That is, uh, okay, uh, another word. That is God promised before the time. Before it happened. Okay. Okay. In Genesis, God gave a promise. He said, I will make man, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. He spoke it in Genesis 1 26. In John 1 1, 1 14, that word that he spoke long time in Genesis, speaking in Genesis is speaking a form. That happens in John. You know, from there to that time, he spoke it beforehand. He spoke it before. Now it's happened. That is what it means by a fourth time. God has said it before it happened. Yeah. Sorry, you are this because we will look at today. Over to in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six, he said, "Let us create man in our own image." Right? Let's not <laughs> let's not go there. Now we will sleep here today. Okay? Yes. Yeah. God said, "Okay." God said, "Let us make man in our own image after our likeness." Okay, That's well, all God said. And, but you make you now you compare that scripture with uh, First John. Is no sorry, okay. John. Is it John? That man. Man. That man that was created in Genesis 1.26, that man with faith, that man now appeared, like Paul said, manifest. Okay, like but, John. wait, 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 this is Uma. When he said, let us create by our own image, it was, it was, it wasn't talking to us, not me, me and you. I mean, it was, no, no, not... God, was, God was talking to himself, yeah. 
He was not talking to us. My, he was saying, let us create. It was not me or you. No. Uh, who, who was the person? He was talking to himself. No, you don't understand. You don't get me. God said, let us create man in our own image, after our likeness. As in, who was the man who was talking that he was going to create? I was Jesus. 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 You don't mean it. Jesus was the man created in Genesis 1 26. So, don't be me, are you? No. Ah. Ah. You, you, are, you, are, you are created in Christ. Ah. You, me and you now, we, 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 we are created now in Christ. We are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. Before, no, before we were born again. Okay, let's assume. Before we were born again, we were that man, the man, the other man, the man from the earth, earth to Adam. We'll do that topic for that, for that one. We'll yeah, continue. okay, let's do that. It was two Adam in Genesis there. There was the first Adam who was from the earth, earth and there was the second Adam who is the Lord from above. And the last Adam, the resurrection, uh, resurrected Lord. So let's not go there. <laughs> okay, what I was saying is, I, I was trying to use that to explain a fourth time for you. To the journey just done on me. So I already wrote this thing now. We are going to do another topic. The man in Genesis. It will be the, it will be the topic okay. for another day. So just continue. Right. God bless you. Uh, that, that, so I was trying to use that to explain a fourth time. You asked me a fourth time. Yeah. That God spoke. What God spoke in Genesis. You know God spoke words in Genesis. The Bible saying Genesis that, uh, who was explaining it? It's not, but he said it spoke the things that were not as if they were, and the things they came to pass. When God was speaking the word, so the God creation in Genesis was, he spoke the word, and they were, the words, they, the word came to pass. He said, let there be light, and there was light. So when mm -hmm. he said, uh, let's make man, the afford, that, is, that was the afford time that Paul was talking about. He said, what he promised mm -hmm. afford by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. We know that the Holy Scripture is Genesis to Malachi. That's the only scripture. He's not yeah. technically who wanted Genesis to Malachi. So what he spoke in the Holy Scripture is that he, concerning his son, are you listening? Concerning yeah. his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh mm -hmm. and declared to be the son of God with power. Now Paul is explaining that that son, that Genesis, that promise that was made from the Holy Scriptures, or when you read, a son will come, the virgin will give. You know, when, when Moses wrote Genesis 1, um, the uh, other prophets, when they, they were students of Moses, when they studied Moses, they write. So, you know, they will write, Elijah wrote, a virgin will give birth. That is little, little portion of the truth. Because yeah. as they were reading, they were coming up with little, little portion of the revelation as the things are going to unfold. They were giving. So the alleged will come and say, a virgin will give birth. And others will come, they will expand mm -hmm. but in little portions as it's given to them. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul is saying that that promise that he made at four time, he now made, came to pass in the son, that the son is the son of God. That this man, even if Paul did not say him, that this man that is being preached by these apostles is the son of God. Who are we talking about? Christ Jesus. Who is the express image? That's why Paul said in Colossians, he is the express image of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the express image of God, the one that gives explanation, the one that gives clarity, the one that gives vision to God, the one that gives you know, the, 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 the mind that gave us the mind of God so that we can understand God and, re and how we relate to him. Our understanding of God affects how we relate to him. That's why it is of utmost importance because it is what knowledge you have of God that you are going to take from him. If a man has a distorted knowledge of God, for example, if a man has a very, uh, uh, some men have devilish knowledge about God. A man child will die, will say, ah, now God take care of God. No, why? Why? You know? That they, so they may have some kind of terrible knowledge about God. And that kind of knowledge they have is why they, that is the God they know. 
That is the God of their heart. It's the God they, they, are, they are approaching. It's the God that they relate to. And it's the God that, do, that will handle them. But when a man has the revelation of Jesus as God, he comes to God with that kind of, also that kind of knowledge. It's very dangerous for a man to have a distorted knowledge of God. Why? The question will be, why does men have this kind of uh, knowledge? Yeah. Let's say a distorted knowledge of God. Why yeah. do they have it? Mm -hmm. Why do they come up with it? Even when it's very clear, we have read a few scriptures tonight that where it's very clear that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. And that Jesus himself, I didn't want to go to that part today where he start talking about himself. We just use the, uh, uh, the apostles' word to establish he's the Son of God. Even Jesus himself said, I am the Father, we are one. He said to Philip, Philip, have you been a long time with me and you don't know that I'm the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So that was Jesus' word, telling, teaching us that he is God himself. Jesus is God himself that came to explain himself to man. Mm -hmm. So why do men have this uh, distorted knowledge of God? It is because they it's what they consent in their hearts. What they consent in their that is the message they believe. The mm -hmm. message because there is no man that is not a believer. It is what you believe now depends on what you, who you are. Uh, right. Even Adam and Eve in the garden, they believed something. God yeah. said to them, yeah, let's go there, let's read it. Let's establish why men have this distorted knowledge. Genesis uh, 3, 7. Okay. Okay, Genesis 3, 1. He said, And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of, of the feed which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Ye had, woman, ye, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And um, this ye here is a plural word, meaning this word was not spoken to Adam and Eve alone, it was spoken to humanity. You understand? Okay. In, in the, this why ye in the Bible is, is, is a plural word. He said, um, ye, shall not, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree of the of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. I hope by now we know that they were not talking about eating one particular fruit. This eat here means uh, if they have received the message in their hearts. You understand? If they have received the message, because the, the, a message was given, okay, let's put it down. God gave them a message. The message was, you should not eat. You understand? So, you should not eat is a knowledge. Now, the, the serpent now came that what is asking the woman, what did God say? When you say, what did God say? Meaning God has said something, has given them message. Hmm? So, he's asking them, now, what did God say? Did God say you should not now, this serpent has come now with a contradictory Message. thing that God, God did not say. So the woman gave uh, her version, but of the fruit of the... Uh, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, this is a full contradiction of what God has said. Now, if we look here now, there is two message that is being spoken of here. Mm -hmm. Let's put our two messages. One, God said this. The other one, someone else said that two kinds of knowledge, two kinds of knowledge is presented. And the prophet said that to the woman, for God, five, for God do not know that it, in the day ye eat thereof, there your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. So it is all about knowledge. Now serpent is preaching. Now the serpent is preaching. Say no, what God said is a lie. God knows the day you eat, you will not have wisdom. This wisdom, he said, you, look at what he said. He said, you will not know, uh, for God do it, no, God knows. 
that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God. He said, Your eyes will be open, they shall not be like God. Mm. One time. So, this what is their eye opening there? An understanding will come. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to come because of what they did here. Jesus had to come to correct the kind of understanding that makes right because there is God that sown, uh, you know, that parable Jesus said, A man sown, um, so is 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 a seed. Our yeah. enemy came to sow tars inside. So there is a knowledge now being introduced to this woman, and they they uh, they aspected, they constant, they, they they received that knowledge, that that another gospel, another knowledge, another understanding. They received it. Mm. And what they received, it, what did they, what, what did they receive? What does that knowledge brought to them? It brought them openly of eyes. Moses said their eyes were open. Mm -hmm. But let's see something. You know how Paul said it in Acts. Let's see how Paul said it in Acts. Paul said this kind of knowledge it causes the eyes to be blind, mm. which we can understand that. When Moses said their eyes were open, meaning their eyes were open to another word, not the word God wanted them to know. No. So in that word that their eyes were open to is the word of where the sons of disobedience, the spirit of disobedience operate. And that word is darkness. There cannot be light in it. So their eyes were blind. I want us to see how Paul said it. Is it uh, at uh, okay? At twenty-six. At twenty-six. Okay. Because Paul, it, Paul will not explain to us that what they thought was an opening of eyes to them. Okay, having therefore obtained help. Okay, I have to know where. Thank you. I'm coming. So instead of their eyes to be open as they expected. Mm. Okay. Is this verse 27? 27. I don't know, I'm asking. Is it okay, okay. No, that place where he said that um, who delivered them from darkness to light. Okay. What was it? Okay, that's you so far that you begin the first. Okay, uh, let me go for that, please. I'd not be there. Let me check okay. our second content. Second content. I wanted to show that place because Paul put it down to say mm. that the eyes, instead of the eyes to be open, mm. uh, because he, that, that is what we will we, we, we see in our world. Somebody is having a distorted knowledge. He will yeah. tell you that that is the knowledge of God. He will tell yeah. you that that is the wisdom of God. He will yeah. tell you that his eyes are very, very open. But meanwhile, he's in darkness. Yeah. It's Acts, it's verse 18 of that scripture we were. Okay. 26, 15, right? Examine me would let me, sorry, okay. I mean, uh, yeah. Let me come again. When they have examined me, would have let me go because there were, was no cause for that to me. Is it Acts? Mm -hmm. Acts 26, 18. It's 26, sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. it's, 20, it's 26 18, right? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome now. Uh, 18, 18, 18. 
Yeah. Okay, to open their eyes and to turn yes. them from darkness to light, yes. and from the power of yes. Satan. Yes, you're that, very right. Say, yeah. That Jesus, yes. after uh, from seventy, said, delivering them from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. This is Jesus talking to Paul. To open okay. their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and mm -hmm. from the power of Satan unto God that mm -hmm. they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith that is. You understand? In Genesis, yeah. the Satan deception was if you eat it, your eye will be open. Right? He said you will not have knowledge equal to God. Knowing good and evil. You see, that is very tricky. Knowing good and evil meaning they will not have double Double mind mm -hmm. in their relation with God. That's where it comes. Yeah. Double mind. Yeah. Now Paul is saying that opening of eye that is supposed to be something good for them is actually blindness. blindness. It is blindness. Yeah. It is why the Son of Man came, so that man cannot see. That you know, if one will imagine that, if you want to imagine that, for God, for example, God told Adam and Eve, and maybe they heard a voice, God spoke to them, they did not believe, they fell, you know, they will feel somehow like, it, 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 maybe it was difficult for them to actually believe who was true, saying the truth and all that. So Jesus came to demonstrate to them that there is no knowledge of good and evil in God. Mm -hmm. Everything, James said, every good and perfect gift comes from God, oh. who has no variableness in changing. He does not change. God is single heart. He's a single singularity is God. So when a Satan introduced that knowledge of good and evil into the world, our world that used to be our world, we are not there anymore by the grace of God because we are translated now from the mm -hmm. kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We now have a single heart in relating mm -hmm. to God. We have sin. we don't come to God with double mind. Mm -hmm. That was the trick because it always went to the knowledge. Now, the place we started from, 1 John 5, 20, which says, we know that the Son of God has come to give us an understanding. This understanding cannot be contradicted. Mm. It is the understanding of who and how God is. Mm. So that is the main reason why Jesus came. And that is why, uh, uh, that's the most important knowledge for the believer. The understanding, to, for a believer to understand God, you must understand Jesus. Mm -hmm. And starting from the point that knowing, knowing that Jesus is God, that's the starting point. Knowing that Jesus is God, for you to be able to understand God, you not have to study, you, you have to, you know, study Jesus, his person as, mm -hmm. as God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You said a lot. He said it can be a mystery. Okay. There's something you said. You said uh, God is not longer a mystery. And you, you said a mystery in the Bible is not like mystery in the secular world. Mystery in the Bible in that is... Very, in, that place, in that very place we read it. First Timothy 3, 16 is where we read it, right? Yeah. Yes. Let's go there. In that very place where we where we read it, let's go. Let's go and read it. It is in that context. Okay. Because we should always remember as a student of the Bible that we don't give fixed meaning to any word in the Bible, except in the context with this thing. It says that without controversy, yeah. God is the mystery of godliness. Yeah. Then, after that uh, godliness, is going to explain now what that, why that mystery now is no longer a mystery to you and mm. I. God was manifest. God showed up. If I was okay. hiding something, if I was hiding something, and I said, I uh, played the game, go and look for the thing, you are looking for it, you will not find it. It's yeah. hidden. But if that thing is laid bare, for example, is laid bare, and I still say, go and look for it. Yeah. You will look for it and you find it. Mm -hmm. From that moment that you look for it and find it, 
it can be a mystery. But the moment you find it, it's no longer a mystery. So mystery in this place is not something that you, you cannot know. In other place of Bible, there is place they wrote mystery could be something you can never know. Because this okay, say, mystery in English language is something you can never know. We say, we say it's mystery. So there are some mysteries you never know. But no. in this context, mystery, yes. No, there are no mysteries about God. There no, are no mysteries about God. No, yeah, not about God. Yeah, it's good you explain okay. where to me. But I said God, there are some mysteries you can never know. There can be mystery in science. There can be mystery in science. There can be mystery, uh, you know, science, you, you are doing uh, discovering all the time. There might be something they come across and say, at this thing, we have not been able to finalize it. We are not be able to come to the conclusion or to, it could be a mystery yet, until that thing is found, until okay. something is explained. Okay, it's good, yeah. Um, now, you said is, uh, God is a mystery to the unbeliever. But is it possible that God can still be a mystery to some believers today, as in believers in Christ now? Because you said everybody is a believer, depending on what you believe. So is it possible for God to be a mystery to some believers today? That is, in a simple language, yeah. because that means, is it yes. possible for some people yes. to know God today? Yes, depending although on the it's not supposed to be. So yes, if you don't, what is mystery? Something that is yet to be explained to you, something that you don't, something that you not, you don't know yet. That thing, some other people might know it according to this place, according to First Timothy 3 16. Hmm? A mystery is something that well, what Paul was explaining. When he said, Great is the mystery of godliness, think about it. When uh, Moses wrote in Genesis and say, uh, or Elijah wrote that a, a virgin will give birth, they will be expecting that virgin. Until that virgin gave birth to Jesus, it was a mystery from that moment to that place. It was a mystery. Until, like the question you asked now, can God still be a mystery to some believer? Yes, even if it's not supposed to be. So why? Even uh, okay. uh, we, we, as we are studying, you know, as you're studying all the time, there are things you don't know that comes uh, to your understanding. That moment that that thing is revealed to you is no longer a mystery. Until it is revealed to you, it is a mystery to you. It may be a mystery to you, but it's not a mystery to other person. Because that, that person that has no truth. Okay. That doesn't mean that the truth is not there. It's not a mystery to me. The truth is there. Yes. It can be even be laying bare. People need, uh, uh, other people mo uh, might have seen it. They might have known it. But those, to those, there is one place he said, he said, um, he said uh, um, what scripture is that? He said that uh, uh, God has revealed the things to babes, but he has hidden it from the prudent and the wise. Jesus yeah. was speaking. Okay. Yeah. Now, does God now do what you to reveal <laughs> to babies? <laughs> Why would God hide this from some people? Uh, no, hey, that is the language. Is that that this time you hide that you said now is a language, is a language barrier. Because actually, if we go and explain that scripture, God does not hide. Because He has said, whoever looks for, we find. It is your duty to look for. When you look for, you find. And if you don't look for, it remains a mystery to you. Mm. So if you don't look for now, eh, and you cannot find, God does not, they go hide it. For those that look for, they find. So it is not God that is hiding it. It is your inability to look for that is hiding it, which is called unbelief. If it's not hidden, why will I look for it? If it's not okay. hidden, why are you looking for it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know you're the... look, okay, <laughs> that's okay. 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 No. Looking for... Look for the speaker, because it's right here with me. Okay. Do you know that, uh, let me, according to the analogy, that speaker now, huh? do you know that it can be in that your house for one year? You will not touch it. You will not even see it until you need it. Mm, that's right. There are things, okay, maybe you have a specific shoe now. It yeah. is in your house. It is in your front of, you see it every day. You have not wear it for one year. It is there. Because why? You don't need it. You feel you don't need it. Yeah. The moment you don't need it, your heart is not going to it. 
That is what the Bible calls hidden. God okay. is not really doing hidey hidey. Let me hide it. You understand? Yeah. Because you are not conscious of it. To you, it is hidden. It's true. I, I don't know if you are getting the language. Because you are not conscious of it. You, because you don't, it told you, you don't need it. Look, for example, there are many unbelievers now. N let me use my pen. Until five, six years ago, I won't be standing here saying these things I'm saying. That five, six years ago told me these things were hidden. Was it God that hid it? No. no. It was when I now feel the you know, feel the urge, the need to draw yeah. close to God. Then I start searching. That my searching, that my searching is now what is called revelation. God yeah. has shown me. No, I will not say God has shown me. So when I was not searching, I would say God has hid it. Just yeah. like in the Old Testament, when they said, let's use that scenario. When in the Old Testament, they said, God took um, collect his spirit from Saul and gave it to to David. Yeah. That is, then I said, God has abandoned Saul. Now, in one, in one, I was teaching in one place, I said, it is not true. God does not abandon anybody. Yeah. Paul, uh, Saul, when he was in need of God, when he was in constant relationship with God, yeah, God yeah. was speaking to him. Even when he has gone astray, God is still speaking, just that the man will not be hearing anymore. Not Why? Because the man's heart is not there. It is men that will leave God. It is men that will leave fight the things. Because why? In their heart, they have laid a barrier. The moment a master hearing, that is what is called God revealed to them. Because why? You now have the you 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 have the the yearning to know. If you want to know, now you start session. When you search the scripture, you see that God many things will come. What I say that is true. There is one application that has been on my phone for about two years now. I've not touched it. But I discovered from one week now, I've been touching it. I discovered that I could do a lot of things with it. I was really so this thing is this easy. And I was thinking, I was even thinking of giving somebody to pay money for somebody to do it for me. But I guess let me try it. The more I'm trying it, the more I'm discovering new things every day. It's true. <laughs> now, if, if you didn't put your time and effort to learn to try it, you would yeah. have paid for your ignorance. Yeah. You would have given money to somebody thinking that the thing is hard. Difficult. Whereas it was just the little effort you should put. This mm. is why Jesus, that is why when we are reading scripture, and I know the language of well, with the English language that the Bible is written is another barrier for people to understand because there are people, I swear, there are people that will stand there and say, like, like they say, God hide it, meaning God hide it. <laughs> God did not hide it. Yeah. God does not hide anything. Praise God. You just okay. say yes. It yeah. depends on the, the underwriting is what is called unbelief. Because yeah. if, because you don't believe the word, you don't act to in, uh, don't act in the word. That's yeah. why this thing seems hiding. So it's not hiding. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. There is another one. You said God dwells among them when you were reading uh, John when you were quoting John. God dwells among them. Does it mean that it was only there that God dwells among? Is not is not among us today? No. Yeah. God is not among us today. Is Christ is in us? Okay, when God you say God us. dwells among them, that was the incarnation. That is those people that saw God. They touch God physically. They touch Christ physically. physically. That was God dwelling among them. Today, God does not dwell among us. God lives in us. He lives in the believer. Praise the Lord. Okay, the next thing I want to ask is uh, the last question, maybe the last question, I don't know. You talk about uh, the, he, okay, he come to save the world. You talk about uh, Jesus is God. Yeah. And since Jesus is God, there's a reason I'm asking this question. Jesus is God. And my, the question I want to ask now, since Jesus is God, did he come to save the world as God or as man? Because what I'm asking is, if, uh, I, th I think because it was because man left God, man have sinned. The wage of sin is dead. 
That is why God wants to save man now. Now, if God is saving man as God, I feel it's injustice. You understand? So I don't know. Did it come to save God as man or it came to save? Okay. Sorry, did, it, did God come to save man as a man or as God? That is. Okay. Let, let, us, let us also understand where, you, first of all, I know what you said is right, but let's understand where you got it from. Why did you say it is injustice for God to save man as God? Yeah, okay, why I feel why I feel is injustice because God is almighty, God is powerful. I believe it will not cost him anything to save man. Because if he comes to save man as a man, if a man should finish, I believe it will cost him. Of course, God is supernatural. So he can apply his supernatural power and do it. Nobody will ask him, nobody will question him. Nobody will judge him. He's the okay. almighty God. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is one of the things we are saying. For yeah. this statement you have made, is the Almighty he can do anything. He can't do anything. Okay. He is the Almighty, but he cannot do anything he wants. Why? Okay. In the law, the law in Genesis says he created the earth and he gave it to men. Man is in charge of the earth. Okay. So there was no way God can interfere in the affairs of men. Mm-hmm. Until today, there is no way God will interfere in the affair, in the affairs of men when there is no man ready, ready to do what he is asking him to do. That's why we say God uses men to do things. Why? Because God cannot come in a spiritual form to say, okay, if, the, if he could do it as as much as he loves us, love humanity, he would have done it. Mm-hmm. But because he cannot do it, why the the act he has given to the son of man, mm. and uh, even Satan, this one, this churches everywhere, they are every minute, three hours, you hear everything, Satan, 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 parody Satan, and see if Satan is one big. Even Satan cannot do anything on this earth except a man gives him permission, and mm. because of that, why this knowledge is important. The knowledge of Christ is important to deal with the affairs of men, to handle situations of God. Why are we preaching the gospel? Why are we going out so that we can bring men to the knowledge of God, so that they can we can all be much to operate this world the way God wants it? Your okay. question is, why did God not just do it? God did God come as a super, a superman, a supernatural man? No, He came as a man. But the Bible said, you know. Uh, uh, the virgin, according to the uh, Matthew uh, uh, rendition, yeah. the uh, virgin uh, had a child. So there was no, um, in biology, it takes a man and a woman to produce child. Yeah. So the virgin had a child because why? The virgin submitted to the word of God and the word brought forth that word that was speaking, that was spoken in Genesis. There was finally a woman, Mary, who accepted it. Uh, because he accepted that the word of God does what he does best. That's why God came as a man. Not because um, uh, because God does not have authority. This is why we say, when these people say, hey, God can do anything. Well done. That's why a lot of uh, unbelievers, they see God as a wicked God. They say he can do anything. Why did he not just do it? Why did he not do it? He can't do everything. He can't do everything. If there are things that you are supposed to do for yourself, for example, there are prayers you are supposed to pray. There are things, and you see Christians asking God to come and do those things for them. He will not do it because it's not, it's not his jurisdiction to do it. God had to come as a man, a man that has authority to function here on earth. That's why he came as a man. As a man to save man. Actually, the death of Christ was just to demonstrate the true nature of God. Mm-hmm. I'm coming, baby. I'm mom is busy. Okay. The death of Christ was God to demonstrate, demonstrate the, the nature of God. People are praying for people to die now. Huh? Ask me, the God they are praying for to kill somebody, he died. Ma killed him, they laid his hand on him, they laid their hands on him, and he killed him, and he died. Mm. He died a painful death. One, to show you that he's not the killer, he also can die. Mm. 
But where his power lies is that he is the resurrected, resurrected Lord. He can. Okay, the last yeah, question. Of the God is, with your explanation now, we have seen God in Christ. Does God give people sickness? Can God make somebody to be sick, to teach somebody a lesson? The Bible, t the Bible told us that all all those that were sick that they brought to Christ on his uh, earth work, he healed them all. Same mm. people he healed, they were the ones that killed him. Hallelujah. God does not afflict anybody, be it whoever he is. God does not have affliction. How can he have? The only thing God afflicts people with is love. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's what the only thing God afflicts people with is love. So as we have seen that there are no uh, those things, there are none of those things in God. Hmm. I'm hearing you, man. I'm just writing. No, I was reading a comment by one of our uh, what via. It is actually injustice if God has saved man. That's true, but God could not. God hmm. and and we don't give place. For such reasoning, because why it will be uh, um, contrary, it, it's something that is contradicting what we know about God. Because God will not do it. God gave the earth to man, gave it to man, and He allowed man run it the way they want. So God, mm. man is in charge, and that's why He came as a man. Man is in charge, is in charge, and man is in charge, whether be it. They say Satan is chasing them or God, they are running with God. They are also in charge. Man is in charge of any knowledge he has submitted to. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge is the most important aspect of man. Not, God is even knowledge. God is knowledge. It's the knowledge of God that, that shapes our life. It's the knowledge, knowledge of God that shapes our life as believers. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of God shapes our life. If we have contrary knowledge, if we have contrary knowledge, as we see in Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, yeah. he beats dead, he lead to death. He cut off, he cut off generation, children of disobedience, children of darkness, whom we are not sent to go and deliver by giving them the light, giving them the opportunity to choose to come to God. God has come to them. God has come to them. We bring them. Go to them, not them. Go to God. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, um, but you have not answered the question. The other one, does God make people to be sick? Like, no, no, I just answered. No, God does not have okay. sickness. No, um, God does not have sickness, so He does not distribute. James, I always love Brother James in the, into that effect because in the package in the book of Brother James, everything is explained. From James 1 upward uh, is explained how man is the architect of his, of his afflictions. If, he, if the man is not the architect directly, maybe someone around him. Because you know, some people are actually really good people. But other people will make some decisions and choices that can affect them. Because we live in men's world. You understand? God is not, James said, it is every, everything that God gives. Is good and perfect. So sickness is not good. Sickness is not perfect. So God does not give sickness because why? God does not have it. Okay. The what of dead is from God too. Like no. when, we, when people die, is it normal slogan? We said God, uh, God give it. God cannot be best. God has taken it. Is God responsible for death? Let's 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 go to James to see who is responsible for death. Apart from seeing, we have seen the death in Adam and Eve story. We have seen how they how they die. Now that was a spiritual death. They were cut off. Now let's see what how James explain it. Actually, it's James. Um, let me look for you when it's a man is the lost and the. Uh, Okay. Okay. 
Even James said of his own, we begat us. God that begat us is full of uh, 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 spiritual gifts that is not in something we don't see in the flesh. God is not in the flesh. So that we are made of the uh, very, uh, um, we are made of the very uh, material which God is made. Mm -hmm. God does not have such. From where is from Okay. I'm coming, I'm looking for it. I didn't mark it well. Okay. Is it? He said James, right? Yeah, James. James or five? Yeah, I'm coming. Every man is drawn away to its own loss. Very little. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pastor, have you seen it? No. It's good. It's James one fourteen. Um, it's James one fourteen. James one fourteen. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm listening. But every man is tempted when he's yeah, you're right. I was doing this job. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away from drawn away of his own lust. An entire. An entire. Then yeah. when lust has conceived, when lust has conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it has finished, it brings forth death. So we see how death comes about. It's not the handwork of God. It's come from. It's not even from Satan self. <laughs> really, yeah, but, is, uh, but today, is that, but yeah, he's talking about the cadets. Yes, but people, uh, but people see that Christians die today. If if, if it's not a sin that Jesus has paid for, or is this sin here is not part of it. This one is a big topic. You are going to okay, we'll go Christians we'll do don't. Christians, this thing, this that's why we said the life that Christ gave, the life, the life that Christ gave is eternal life. Okay. Eternal life. It is different from this life me and you we are living now. Temporary life. This one is eternal life. life. <laughs> you can call it like that because every man we must drop this body. Well, we, we are in the mortal body. Jesus has paid for debts. A Christian does not die uh, in the very right language of it. He sleeps. Because we know that on the resurrection day, we were resurrected to, to the glory of God. We resurrected Christ. So the Christian does not die. You understand? So the death... Um, He's talking about now that every man is concerning man because men were too. Uh, you see how J uh, James' uh, caution was about mm -hmm. how men are quick to say, God, say, God did God that. First of all, he said, Let no man say when he's tempted because men say these things. I'm tempted yeah. of God. 
You understand? Mm. So in that, it, it, James is not trying to explain. These are monks men. It's also a, a wisdom that we can live by. Because it's, it's telling us where so the thing that really hurts, where it comes from, is from man's desire. That whatever I desire okay. that is not of God will bring him to a point where Satan can lay the hold of him. The, the thing is talking about here, James is talking about, he's talking to brethren. So this is not the same of Adam and Eve is dealing with here. Okay, praise the Lord. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, man of God. We draw the cutting here because the time is fast paying, but well, the truth is that um, it we was a just, like thing. living here. We can spend five hours here. That is a good thing about that, God's word. But we have to. Good. So I still believe we will yeah. do this again. Even yeah. from your teaching, I, I have been able to coin out another topic from this teaching of today, which we I believe we will we'll look at. And uh, if you are here, I would like us like you to join us. But I will uh, DM the woman of God. We'll face time for that. We are going to look at the man in Genesis. You understand? Yeah. We need to go out who that man is that he was talking about. We need to trace that man. So the woman of God is always ready. So, we'll do that, eh? so thank you, uh, woman of God. I really celebrate you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Can you just pray with us before you go? It was a wonderful day. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that we have received. Father, yeah. we thank you that this word is bearing fruit in us. We thank you Amen. that this word will increase us. We thank you that this word will shape our lives. We thank Amen. you that this word will give us abundance of light. We thank Amen. you because you, the entrance of your word brings light. We thank yes. you that we are able to walk in the light of your word in the understanding of your son. Amen. We thank you that we are established in your word, O oh Lord. We are doers of your words and not hearers only. We thank you, Lord, that we have enabled, we have ability to do your word, to carry out all that that you have said concerning us. We yes. thank you, Lord, as we, this very moment of our seasons, as we are inching out for evangelism, we have uh, our utterance to communicate the gospel, to bring sons into the light in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for increase. In thank Jesus' you. mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you God. for having me. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for watching and staying with us. God yeah. bless you all. And you too. And thank you everyone for joining us. All of you, thank you for your comment. I see your comment. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Uh, thank you. Those are the decisions. Thank you. I will post, in case you missed this session, I will we post it on YouTube later. So you have to go to my YouTube channel and follow me on my YouTube channel. And subscribe to my YouTube channel is uh, Morse Daily, like M O N S, then daily, D E I L E Y, Morse Daily. You know, my Facebook page too is Morse Daily. Follow me there so that you can rewatch this broadcast. The woman of God really blessed me today. I won't lie. I learned a lot from her, and I believe you will also learn a lot too if you play this broadcast again. God bless you. I look forward to see you again. Thank you.